oops for me and my friends here. That's the stuff. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Let me 
Hello, miners, and welcome back from summer vacation. Finish your drinks and pour the sand out of your guns because it's time to get back to work. And update 25 is just around the corner. The major headline of update 25 is Deep Dives, our major new endgame mechanic. They are available only to promoted veteran dwarves and will come in two variants, Deep Dives and Elite Deep Dives. The latter only for those who are feeling extra masochistic. Each week, new preceded deep dives will become available through the new deep dive terminal. All eligible players will play the same deep dives for that week and be able to compare results. But what is a deep dive? Deep dives are the sort of ultimate deep rock fantasy where we string together three consecutive preceded extra challenging missions into one long adventure going deeper into the crust of Hoxies than we've ever gone before. What makes up the challenge? Well, for one thing, deep dives are difficulty locked. There's no running these on easy difficulty. And in each mission or stage, instead of contending with just one main objective, you get two randomly selected. Plus, your health, ammo, and nitra, those carry over from one stage to the next. Complete stage one with six health left, you start stage two with six health. And then there's the fact that every stage of a deep dive is guaranteed to come with mutators, both the ones you already know and love, as well as a generous handful of all new ones we've cooked up. We've got some real doozies in update 25 for you, such as low oxygen. As the title says, hold your breath and try not to die before you reach an oxygen tank. Lethal enemies. The aliens are extra cranky today, all enemies deal significantly more damage. Regenerative bugs. I'll have what they're having. All enemies regenerate their health if you wound them and don't take them out straight away. Volatile guts. You thought exploder infestation was bad? Well, whatever infested those poor creatures has run rampant here. Every alien explodes. Just awful. Parasites. Well, it gets even worse. The aliens in this place are just, uh, uh, just full of angry parasitic worms. Haunted cave. There's something in this cave. It's hunting you relentlessly, and it just won't die. If you survive and make it that far, actually completing deep dives will earn you new special rewards only obtainable this way. Completing the first stage will earn you a sizable cache of minerals, which you'll crack open post-mission. The second stage will earn you an, an infused matrix core, a powerful new item that basically counts as a blueprint for one of our all-new weapon overclocks. And completing the third and hardest stage will earn you a random infused cosmetic core. This system will be expanded on in later updates, particularly in update 26, while we plan to introduce the previously teased machine events. Machine events are special challenges that will spawn in normal non-deep dive missions, usually consisting of time-based combat scenarios or puzzles. The machine events will need a promoted dwarf present to activate them, using a special tritolite key given upon promotion. But all players in the team will be able to take part in the machine event and reap the rewards, regardless of promotions. Completing a machine event lets you infuse an empty matrix core, downloading the data for a rare and lost weapon overclock into it. If you have no empty matrix cores available, you will still gain a hefty bonus in the form of minerals and credits, so doing machine events will always be lucrative, if you survive the challenge that is. The machine events are currently in full production and will likely undergo some radical changes before release. And as said, some patience on your part is needed. We don't expect these to go live before update 26. Now, matrix cores? Overclocks? What are these things and how do you use them? Well, that's what the Forge is for. The Forge is a new addition on the Space Rake, and this is where your infused cores go. Every core you gain will be craftable using resources in the Forge and are either used to make new exclusive cosmetic items or the second major addition of Update 25, Weapon Overclocks. Weapon Overclocks are a new feature available to all weapons in Deep Rock Galactic. 
They are basically rare and extremely powerful mods that can significantly boost the damage, accuracy or capacity of a weapon or otherwise radically alter how it works in general. Update 25 will launch with dozens and dozens of overclocks to unlock. And because of their modular nature, this pool will continue to grow in subsequent updates. We've done a complete overhaul of the entirety of our top-of-the-line beard physics. Beloved by all, but a bit prone to getting stuck in the floor. But now, all new physically driven skeletal animation for all of our existing cosmetics, as well as the honestly vast upcoming batch of new offerings. Magnificent mustaches, breathtaking beards, a game about mining, more like Beard Simulator 2020. Secondly, the next step in our skin system. Dozens of new skins to unlock, and not just simple recolors any longer. Mesh attachments are now a thing. So, yeah, that's update 25. Hello Miners, Mission Control here, back with another company briefing. Listen up and allow me to introduce you to Update 27, Little Big Things. So, firstly, the lads down in R&D have been busy on a little thing called Project Omen, a massive network of modular extermination towers meant to assist our crews down on Hoxies. And of course, it all went haywire as soon as they turned it on. The system has been put into emergency shutdown, but management kindly asks that you seek these installations out, activate them, and blow the bloody things up before they do the same to us. Succeed and you will get the opportunity to infuse a matrix core, plus a nice bonus to your post-mission payout. To make matters worse, a Scamcom reports sightings of a new strain of Glyphid, a cousin of the Praetorians, called the Oppressor. It remains vulnerable from the rear, but it's practically impervious to attacks from the front. Don't encounter this fellow while stuck in a narrow tunnel. That would be, um, unhealthy. Scamcom offers a secondary note as well, that further mutations of this sort in the near future is more likely than not to keep an eye on the information channels. It's not all bad news, however. Management is pleased to report the introduction of customizable loadouts. Using this, you'll be able to set up specific configurations for your gear and save them to one of three handy slots per dwarf. You can even set a custom icon for each. In other good news, a new set of weapon skins has been spotted in the cargo crates. It's a fancy one called Fourth Relic, according to reports. 
good opportunity to harken back to the glories of old. The Union has put in some hard work on your behalf. Management has finally approved the extravagant cost of custom beer mugs per drink available in the Abyss Bar. Getting drunk while on the clock has never looked fancier. Certain everyday actions have received some significant visual improvements, such as hanging from zip lines, grabbing ledges, and interacting with terminals. This is all part of an ongoing process, with more to come in future updates. Your internal HUD and our terminal interfaces have seen a slew of minor improvements as well. For this round, we have focused primarily on improving the feedback whenever you receive rewards of any kind, giving you nice, concise pop-ups that more clearly tell you exactly what you got. And brace yourselves. R&D approved a new system that allows you to properly show off the bushy glory of your beards, regardless of which suit of armor you're wearing. No longer will you be restricted to keeping your hairy abundance hidden. Let the beards free. Add that to the usual shuttle load of minor tweaks, additions, alterations, and overall number crunching, and you have update 27, little big things. Take care of their miners. Now get back to work. Hello, miners, and welcome to Deep Rock Galactic. Deep Rock Galactic is a one to four player co-op FPS and very much focused on two things, mining minerals and blowing up alien monsters. You are a dwarven combat miner, part of a team of up to four high skilled specialists working for the Space Mining Corporation Deep Rock Galactic. Between each mission, you'll be able to choose between four different classes. The Gunner is the guy with the Gatling gun. The bread and butter heavy combat miner, found at the front of his team and putting down a blistering hail of gunfire. His primary job is simple, area denial. Putting his rapid fire weaponry, heavy revolver and grenades to good use in keeping his team safe from the slavering hordes. Among his equipment, you'll also find a deployable shield generator capable of shielding the entire team for a limited time, as well as the ever-handy zipline gun that lets him put up ziplines across the deep chasms you'll come across. The Scout is all about lighting and mobility, which is good since the Caves of Hoxies are renowned for their impenetrable gloom. While all dwarves carry flares to light up the dark, the Scout is the only one with a dedicated flare gun to fire special high-intensity flares over long distances. Besides his assault rifle, sort of shotgun, and freeze grenades, he also comes equipped with a rechargeable grappling gun that lets him quickly escape enemies and zip around the environment pretty much exactly how he wants. The engineer, meanwhile, is a quite different beast. The engineer supports the team by plunking down automated turrets and thus helps secure zones for longer-term mining or preparing for incoming alien swarms. And once they arrive, he is conveniently equipped with a rapid-fire shotgun, as well as a heavy-duty grenade launcher for clearing out packs of smaller aliens in a single blow. When he's not setting off massive explosions, he usually got his platform gun equipped, a most ingenious tool that allows him to set up handy platforms for himself and his teammates. And finally, the Driller, the miniest of the combat miners. As the name implies, he comes equipped for the task with a set of titanium drills, letting him chew through rock and stone like butter. And for range, he carries a small caliber pistol, as well as a devastating flamethrower for laying down sheets of sticky flame and incinerating anything in his path. Deep Rock Galactic is at heart a co-op game, but in case you should want to traverse the depths of Hoxies alone, that is fully possible. Going on solo missions gives you all the same options as otherwise, and also gives you an AI companion, your trusty robot sidekick, Bosco. He will follow along as you head down, and while he's no dwarf, he will dig minerals, shoot enemies, and light up the caves according to your orders. At mission's end, you will return to the orbital space rig. This is where you get to make use of your hard-earned credits and minerals. 
Spend them on dozens and dozens of gear upgrades for your weapons, tools, and personal robots. And complete milestones to unlock special perks to improve your mining performance. But what good is all that if you don't look good doing it? At the DRG Cosmetics Shop, you'll find everything a growing dwarf needs to look his best. And at the end of a busy day at work, head to the cozy Abyss Bar for some R&R. &R. Wet your whistle with one of our many special dwarf brews, or perhaps get your groove on over by the jukebox. This is Mission Control, signing off. Welcome aboard, miners. Hello Miners, and welcome to this introduction to DRG's latest update, Season 1 Rival Incursion. So, what's all this about Season 1? Well, it's two things. 
Firstly, it's our way to start theming our updates more, to build more of a narrative into what we're doing. And the first point of that is our new mission type, Industrial Sabotage. A new player has arrived on Hoxie's. A rival corporation of dastardly robots has begun prospecting efforts on our lucrative little ball of dirt, and management will have none of it. You and your team will be sent in deep to locate the rival data vault, a fortified hub facility where the rival robots gather all their prospecting data, and to get away safely with that data rack. The data vault is protected by a lethal force field, which must be shut down to access the vault. To do so, you must locate two power stations by following the cables from the data vault. When you get there, the power stations must be hacked. Don't worry, we're sending in some uh, assistance to help on this part. Taxi doesn't work quietly, however, so be prepared for a bit of a fight. Once both power stations are inoperable, the force field can be shut down and you will face your hardest challenge yet. Protecting the data vault is the Caretaker, a huge guardian robot that oversees the operation of the vault itself. This pyramid-shaped monstrosity should provide a challenge to even our most hardened combat miners. Upon defeating the Caretaker, all there's left to do is access the vault, grab the data rack, destroy any remaining guardians, and get the hell out of Dodge. We're not sending you in to deal with this lethal new threat empty-handed. Firstly, R&D have been hard at work cracking the rival robots. You now have a handheld hacking device that will let you hack rival patrol bots and make them fight for you. Secondly, management has seen fit to finally approve four new weapon contracts, one for each class. That means four new primary weapons with full upgrade trees to unlock, dozens of new overclocks to uncover, and tons of frameworks to find. The gunner gets the hurricane, a devastating micro-missile launcher that we trust will be only too welcome in his arsenal. Hit the trigger and shower your enemies in volleys of remote-controlled rockets. What could be better? Meanwhile, the scout has grabbed the plasma carbine, a high-capacity, rapid-fire plasma thrower that'll melt anything in your path with no need to swap magazines. Just mind that overheat. We don't want the fusion battery blowing up in your face. The engineer has duly rigged his own. The Lock One Smart Rifle. A fiendish bit of engineering that'll let you lock onto enemies and let loose flurries of lead with surgical precision. We realize dwarves are not big on precision, but we suspect this one might be just up your alley. And lastly, the driller has been given an industrial grade corrosive sludge pump. All that corrosive goo we keep around, fling it at your enemies and watch them dissolve into foaming puddles of screaming icon. Management has begun a brand new incentive program to distinguish our most dedicated employees. This is also the second part of the whole season one thing, to act as a convenient shell for a brand new performance pass. Deep Rock Galactic's take on a battle pass. Season 1 brings you 100 levels of unlocks, challenges to complete, and bonuses to collect, all completely free. Earning performance points is how you advance through the season's 100 levels. You earn these simply by completing missions, alongside hefty bonuses paid out for completing season challenges. Furthermore, during missions you may recover data cells for even further bonuses. Do so by chasing down a rival prospector drone and destroying it, or find a rival data deposit, hack it, and recover the data cell inside. Some season levels grant you rewards directly, while others grant you scripts. Scripts are company credit tokens that let you unlock a single field of your choice on the new and poetically named Cosmetic Tree. And what will all your hard work get you? Such treasures, my friends. New beards, Helmets, pickaxe parts, paint jobs, satchels of crafting materials, and fat stacks of cold, hard cash. And the coup de gras, a brand new weapon framework for every gun available. And fear not, completionists. Once the season ends, we still fully intend to make it possible to obtain any items you may have missed out on. Exactly how shall remain a secret for now.
To commemorate the release of Season 1, we'll also be releasing a new DLC pack, aptly named Rival Tech. The Rival Tech pack will let you deck out all your guns and theme with our new enemies. No reason to let all those nice bits go to waste after all. The update, of course, also includes all the usual under the hood improvements and additions. And yes, we heard you. That also means a few more loadout slots for you to toy around with. We trust you will spend them wisely. This is Mission Control, signing off. Rock and Stone. Rock, rock, rock and Stone!